Good morning. You are with me, Tony Tesler, and I've got a cute Halloween decor project today. Let me just take a minute and figure out where we are on the internet. Refresh. So I can see what's going on. Hmm, why didn't this, oh, here we go. Oh, oops. All right, hey Gail, you are quick. Okay, so hopefully my comments will roll up. Uh, sometimes they seem to quit, like they fill up the screen and then they, then they're done. All right. So today I'm going to make this cute, I called it a paper shadow box. Um, but it's really, I mean, it's a frame, it's a paper frame. I got the idea from someone else. Um, so I have swaps. Do you want to see swaps first? Gail, since you are the only one here is up to you. Yay on swaps or swaps later. Because actually, you're going to get um, one of these because my swap, I, apparently I got four of them back. Quick is better than missing you. Quick? What do you mean quick is better? Hmm. Swaps yes or no? I think swaps yes. Yeah. Swaps quick. All right. So, first one, this was mine, and this is the one I'm going to send to um, you and probably uh, Virginia and Sue and another one. I got four of them back. So, I used the, the leaves and did some sponging on them and a little bit of the paper. Loved it. Uh, oh, yeah, the swap was from Jill Olson, and this was from her girls that are keeping her... Um, going while they're doing their uh, two-year thing. So more with the autumn stuff. A girl named Gwen. So this is nice. I like that, uh, you know, the silver, the metallic mesh ribbon on the inside. Nice. Some of this balmy paper, the glitter paper, and the mousse. Now this ribbon, she cut the ribbon like in half. That's that polka dot, uh, white polka dot, Actually, she may have cut it in thirds because that's a very thin strip, but that's a good idea to use just a little bit of it, you know? Love this. I don't do enough with this set with the mountain air. Yeah, it's like I feel like I've hardly used it. This I like, and somehow I got two of these. I don't know why, but I like it. I like the whole color block thing. That's kind of what I did with my uh, workshop with my Halloween card. Mm -mm -mm. This one is cool. This is one of those, uh, what do you call it? It's a stand-up card. Stands up like that. So my question is, when you send people cards like this, do you just assume that they know how to, you know, you know, pull it apart, make it go like this, and then it sets up? I don't know. I feel like sometimes they need instructions to figure out how they're supposed to open them and set them out. I don't know. What do you do with that? Like this one. This one is really cute. Like I like how that comes right to the edge, the, the cat. But this is, I think it came like this. And I'm like, was it supposed to sit up like that? Or is it supposed to sit like, I don't understand. And I don't understand what this style is. But I like it. I like the looks of it ish all right and then this one uh swiper card i like this boop boo and i already took pictures of these by the way so i can uh i'm gonna be posting them i took them edited them everything ready to go i like this fence and the wagon wheel with a bit of the metallic and those plaids that are going to be on sale next month 
and the cinnamon cider. I love that. You do put instructions with yours? Okay. Because that's what I figured, like, I have a hard time, like, you know, how are they going to know what to do? Because we all know, like, especially those cards that it's like a, a never-ending card where you keep flipping it different ways to open it. And I like them, but I'm just not sure people know what to do with them. So, yeah, instructions, that's a good idea. All right, this is the um, Gather Together and a, a big piece of the, this is the brass foil. I love that. And I like these pumpkins. I like how she did the wheat behind it, so neat. I like swaps because I get different ideas of stuff that I may have, but I've never used it that way, you know? And then again with the um, lovely leaves, or love of leaves. I like that. And the, with the embossing folder, just a little bit of that ribbon. Cute Halloween card with these banners. So this large banner, that really is four and a quarter inch wide. It goes across the entire width of the card. And more of this metallic mesh ribbon. I like it. The only thing, um, if I emboss like the whole front of a card, I would probably put another piece of paper behind this because it's, it's not as sturdy as maybe it could be, but it's still gorgeous. So this, she used um, some of the stencils, and this is like the white marker, and this is all kinds of shimmery. So these bats are cut out of the glimmer paper, but this, I mean, she must have covered this whole thing with Wink Stella because it is so, it is so sparkly and shimmery. I like it. Yeah, Gail, we, um, we quit doing them. We need to get back into swaps. I've joined a couple like I said, this was Jill Olson, but um, my friend Jeanette does some too. It's I like getting them. I don't like when I overcommit and have to make 36 of the same thing, but I do like getting them. This, I love it, with this corner and just a little bit of the, the plaid paper. And when I, I've taken pictures of these, and when I put them on the group in an album, I do have who made them. So I, you know, put the name... Now this, I love it. I love this ribbon and this, so it just like folds up under the, the piece of foil there. So that's interesting. Another Halloween card. I love it with the Cajun and the, the purple and just to tie in that ribbon in a knot and these gems. I like it. gather together. So here she is gathered together with the new set. So I like that because these leaves are from the set um, from last year. And I love this paper. There's, I keep seeing stuff online that nobody knows what this thing is. And we all think it's a, a big pine cone, but we don't, I don't know for sure. So you have an aunt and nineties when she gets her cards, she calls. That's, that's funny. I mean, that's great that she calls you <laughs> and you figure it out. Yeah, these are some good cards, really good batch. Now this, the spider web was embossed on the silver and I like that look. And then she's the banner year set. And then the last one, um, actually my friend Connie, uh, I haven't seen her since I haven't been to convention in so long, but Connie Ingram. And um, I like how she used the same paper for the you know, the coffee cup. Nice. So yeah, I already have these pictured and edited and ready to go. And all I have to do is post them in my group and put their names with them. So now one more thing before I get started. Um, Patricia, I'm glad you shared it because you reminded me. So I spent some time this weekend cleaning my craft room because it's gotten out of hand and I found a whole bunch of stuff that I'm gonna be giving away. So I found two of these. They're little out, um, little notebooks and they've got grid paper in them and I just stamped the, the cover of them. And then the ribbon, so I ran a piece of sticky strip along the back here and then the ribbon, you know, then you can use it as like a, your paper mark, your page marker or whatever. But, so anybody who shares this by Saturday, nine o'clock, 
this Saturday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Share this, and um, what I'm going to do is, so when it gets shared, I can see, you know, whatever, I can see who shares it, and then I'll put everybody's name in a list that shared it and pull them, and then I'll have to get your address, so I'm going to mail this. So I'm going to have two. Next week, I'm going to have some other things that I cleaned out, and um, I'm going to do the same thing. Share it, and then I'll pick to see, you know, who's going to be the winner. Um, I like these things, and I have I still have some blank ones. They were a cute little, you know, notebook to have in the car. All right, so let's get to it. Paper frame. Now, I don't know if you can see... They have like the mitered corners, and this really is all from one piece of paper. I did not get this original idea. Um, I originally saw it from Rhonda Wade, and then I found somebody else's, because then I did some Googling to try to find like written instructions, because I couldn't, and I found somebody had a project sheet, like it was just a, a grid, a drawing of where to cut, um, and I'll have to go back and find that again, because now I'm down to, I'll just make myself notes of what I want to do um, but so there's no I don't really have any written things so we're just gonna have to go through it as we can but this is all made out of one piece of paper and it folds up to make the frame and then I call it a shadow box because you know then I put stuff in it so now you could um, it doesn't really want to sit up by itself so that's why I put it in this little thing I had one, my first one I made, it would sit up by itself. Um, but, you know, then you'd open the door and the wind would get in, in the room and there it would go. So I suggest getting one of these little things and just propping it up. And it's adorable. I like it. All right, so this one, 12 by 12. I think I had posted that in case anybody wanted to, like, try to make one. Let me put this where I can see it. And then move my iPad out of the way. So you're going to need your scoring tool, your scoreboard. Oh. And I am using, um, I'm going to cut my DSP later when I'm ready, but you need a four and a half inch piece, square inch piece of designer series paper um, and 12 by 12 cardstock. I'm using a uh, textured 12 by 12 just because I pulled this out of my stash and this was the only piece I had left but I like it because you know it'll give it like a, a grainy like a, a wood look so it's gonna work I wish I had more but I think this is my last piece so for this particular one my side pieces are three quarters of an inch long and we need to make four score marks on each side get this out of the way too so I'm going to score at three quarters of an inch, one and a half, two and a quarter, and three. All right, I'm going to turn, do the same thing, three quarters, one and a half, two and a quarter, and three. Turn. One more, three quarters, one and a half, two and a quarter, and three. And final, three quarters, one and a half, two and a quarter, three. Now I'm gonna leave my scoring tool here because I'm not quite finished with it. So what we're gonna do to start is we are cutting all this corner off. So you can see where all these squares are, the four by four. I'm gonna cut here and here on each corner. And I am gonna, I have to turn this a little certain way so the glare so I can actually see it. Alright. Now I've seen this done with um, 8.5 by 11 too. It's all in the scoring. So your scores have to be the same 
no matter what. So whether your pa paper's rectangle or square, doesn't matter. Um, I'm gonna do a rectangle one later and probably do a half inch. And I have not seen any that are like an inch because that takes up so much of your paper. You would be left with a teeny tiny inside. All right, one more corner. And I'm cutting these straight, like just the line all the way down to the last line. I'm not angling anything in. I want it all straight, straight, straight. All right. Now, to get these, um, how the mitered corners, that's just on the top and bottom, these angles. To get that, we're gonna do some more scoring. So think of this as north, south, east, west. We wanna do the this extra cutting and at an angle and scoring only on north and south. So since our panels or our sides were three quarters of an inch, I wanna go in three quarters of an inch from this side. So that's at three. So that's it. I'm gonna go at three and three quarters. I'm only gonna score down to this second score line. Okay. And then I'm gonna cut it at from this corner up to our score line. And you'll that'll make more sense when I'm done here. Um, so same thing on this side. This is at nine, so I'm going to eight and a quarter, and I'm scoring down to the second score mark. All right, and then I'm gonna flip it so I can do the opposite side. Same thing, go in three quarters of an inch and score down to the second line. And on this side, three quarters inch and down to the second. Okay, now I'm done with my oh, scoring tool. So here's what I'm saying. I wanna, in order to get that mitered look, I wanna cut from, I'm gonna cut down this score mark and then from the here to this corner here. So, boop, all right. So I'm going to do that right now. Cut. And then, okay. So that's going to fold over and give us that corner look on, on the corners, that mitered corner. All right. And then go That's what we want, oops. And then I'm gonna flip around and do this side, same thing. Corner to corner and then this flap. All right, and then flap. Sometimes it's just awkward getting your scissors in here, depending if you're you know, right-handed, left-handed, whichever, whatever side. All right, I think my comments stopped. Okay, so all these four pieces, this is, you're gonna need your bone folder. This is actually gonna be the back because of when I score, I want my score marks to fold like that. So we're gonna fold and press down. You really want a good crisp, angle for this all your sides because it is a a frame you don't want it all loosey-goosey and have it bowed out any so crisp lines now the gist of this is we're going to put tape here and this is going to fold in to make our frame sides okay oh oops I disappeared my my thing okay so more scoring, I'm gonna score all of them. And then I, I know I didn't cut my designer series paper, so I'm gonna have to do that. Because you wanna put your designer series paper down on the inside before you start folding any of your pieces in. All right. 
yeah, I really like this um, textured cardstock that we had. I'm glad I had a couple pieces. I know I have like probably half a pack of soft suede. Um, now when I go to attach this, I am using a sticky strip. I would use liquid glue also, but with liquid glue, you're gonna have to hold it in place and I don't really feel like I can put the kind of pressure on it that I want, so the sticky strip is going to do it for me. You could use whatever you want. That feels like that piece did not fold straight. Okay, so when we fold the sides in, we're gonna attach our straight sides first and then add our mitered sides. And this is gonna come up over like that, okay? But let's get to my designer paper first. So I couldn't decide between, it's gonna be either the bats or this Argyle, or what do you call this? What do you call this print? I forget, maybe it's not Argyle. Yeah, I love that textured paper. Mm. So my original one had more of the white showing. So let's, you know, think of it this way. It's either gonna be this or this. Harlequin, that's what this print is called, right? Uh, I think I'm gonna go with the bats just because, why not? All right, so I gotta cut this real quick. And I want this lighter bit over here. Actually, I can use this bit because that's going to, I'm gonna keep my stuff in the same placement. So four and a half square. So we want, that's what we want. I'm really loving these Halloween papers. I like that the sides, the backs of them have flowers on some of them. That makes it more useful, I think. Like, not just Halloween-y. Bats, I'm glad we agreed, Gail, because I had already cut it before that comment showed up. Funny, all right, so let's tape this. Oh, did I run out of tape? Oh, you're kidding me. Yep, okay. All right, I'm gonna have to use some glue because that that little tape runner for me is not, um, I don't have any refills like right here at my desk, so I don't want to stop and get it. All right, so I'm gonna go this way. Ooh. So you just wanna center this And that may be not that easy. Uh, I'm hoping that looks about right. Because see, you wanna put your designer series paper in first because these, the sides actually come in and they, they will cover it up a little, like the very edges. So if you're trying to put it in later, you'll have to get a tool to like jam it under there, which ask me how I know that. All right, now this, of course I got tape under here, so that's gonna wanna stick to my, it's always something. Yep. All right, let me add my sticky strip now. I've got maybe another roll of this. So I'm gonna cover this, just because I'm a weirdo and I want it completely down. Now this is where I was saying, you could use the liquid glue if you want, um, but I don't think you're gonna be able to press it down on here good enough. All right, so, this piece, and like I said, these, the top and bottom, like north and south, we're gonna do those last. This really doesn't take long to 
make and assemble the, the base of it. Um, I found it was, I mean, a lot of fun, but more time figuring out what I wanted to put on the inside. You know, how to doll up the, the inside of it. So yeah, Gail, you know, I like this Moon River, um, and I thought it was more gray until I got in these lights, and now I'm like, oh, it kind of has a blue tint to it, but I still like it, and I still think, I mean, I picked it because I thought it matched my project with the sparkly stuff, plus kind of Halloween-y. All right, one more thing of tape. Assembly, we are ready. So what we're gonna do, let me show you this way. These side pieces are gonna roll in and attach like that. So they're gonna make squares. I don't think I have enough fingers, but can you see? Can you get the idea of how it's going to assemble? Look at that, that came off right away. All right, now, how I actually did this, I held down the, fold down that first flap, <clears throat> I just put it like that, and then it should pop up. See? <coughs> mm, sorry. Little cough. Now, I suppose that new tape, um, could work too, the stronger stuff. All right, so I'm folding that. See, and then that'll pop up. And we're almost there. Now I can't do the same technique. I can't like fold this first flap down and just fold it like that because I want these corners, they have to come up over like this. I want it all attached. So I'm gonna use some glue dots too, and I've got a bunch of extras from my paper pumpkins. I'm putting glue dots right in the corner. Can you guys hear my neighbor's dogs barking? Ugh. All right, one more. Let me pick these off right in the garbage. Okay. Now I'm gonna peel this off. Hi, Natalie. This one I kind of have to be careful because I want to hold these pieces up so that I can get the corners down in the right spot and then I have to fold this down so let's try this all right I've got the one side All right, that, I feel like um, that was a little bit crooked. I'm gonna press these down. So the corners are good. I feel like I just didn't get that like back far enough because it's not totally straight, but that's gonna be the top, so not a problem. I'm gonna have to do better on the bottom one though because I want my, the bottom has like my tombstone sitting on it, so I want everything to be nice and perfectly placed, straight. All right, more glue dots. And if you didn't wanna do 
the mitered corner look, um, yours would just be straight across. Like, it's not a big deal. I just think it looks nicer and more like a real frame. Glue dotty things. Two more sticky strips. And then we'll get to the decorating part. Alright, of course this last one is gonna give me a little a little bit of a hard time. Alright. Okay. So again, I want this flap to be right here. So I could try to hold it there and then I come up squeezing. This is really like it'll take you a couple to get it. Oh that is like perfect. Good good good. My other one, my the corners didn't quite meet because I tried a different way to fold that flap over. Live and learn. All right, so this is good. That's our base. I'm liking it already. All right, let's put this over here. I need my embossing. So I wanted to, um, I thought these looked like tombstones. <clears throat> these were the dies that come from the Halloween Magic set. And I thought, well, if we're gonna cut the bottom of that off, and that's gonna look like a tombstone. So I already did the larger one. The smaller one, I wanna stamp first. <coughs> mm, sorry, excuse me. I wanna stamp first and emboss it, and then cut it out. All right, let me set this here. Oop. We're gonna need our iridescent pearls. And then I already pre-cut. This is from the Tasteful Labels die, the scallopy circle kind, and um, a circle from the layering circles that fits in there. And then I already pre-cut some bats and loaded up the dimensionals out of my black glitter paper. Um, yeah, it took, I put, can you tell how much this has popped up, the, the tombstone? I put four layers of the black dimensionals on there and that took forever. I'm gonna use my, my other stuff. <clears throat> oh man, now I seem froggy. All right, let's emboss this first. So I'm using the Hallow's Night Magic. So I'm gonna do this part and you know, I like these flowers and then I'm gonna emboss the There Is Magic in This Night. Open if you dare. I thought that would be cute, like, because it's a tombstone. Like, funny. But we're going to do what I already have out. And since I wrecked my Versamark pad last week, now I have a new one. I haven't had a new one in probably 15 years. Like, this is amazing. And I hope I can keep it nice for a little bit. So, emboss. And this is where I ran into trouble because I was using my black embossing powder and I like knocked it over right onto my Versamark pad. Actually, you know what, let me cover that up. Now I'm gonna on purpose try to keep it nice. <clears throat> no, Gail, I don't. <laughs> it's allergy time. Well, it has been for a while, but um, I quit taking that stuff, that Flonase, just because I didn't like having to suck that up in my nose every day. All right, good enough. Now, while we're embossing, I'm going to stamp. I'm going to do this piece. Ooh, I got some stuff in my embossing powder that should not be there, probably. Like some bits. I'm going to have to to clean that out now this um, I'm just eyeballing trying to get it in the middle normally I would stamp first and then die cut this but you know in the interest of time 
Boop. Okay. Let me funnel this back in to be looked at later. I think it was just like little bits of paper and stuff from when I was cleaning up after my incident last week, embossing powder incident. All right, now I'm gonna heat this up. So hold please while I do the embossing. does it okay yeah I had to go get my tweezers real quick reach for them ah let's hope that's not wrecked okay so now I need to cut this out with the smaller die and I've got my little machine I should have had sitting closer. All right, this is my little Sizzix because that's what I have. All right, so I'm going to I need to trim this off the side pieces a little bit. So it'll fit because this is only like two and a half inch wide machine. So what I have to do is um, I use a little bit of post-it tape and I do this with my big shot sometimes too. All right, give that a little, hold it down. And then, I still complain that this is counterintuitive. I don't like having to crank the wheel this way to get it to go that way. Does not compute. All right, we've got that cut out. Trash and get this up out of the way. Let's move all that. All right, now, oh, and I didn't even get it cut out good. Jeez, must have moved. All right, well. There we go. Good enough. Now for this one, I just cut the bottom line to line. So see here how I've got them layered. Uh, now to get this one, I actually brought in my cutter and I wasn't quite measuring like, oh, I wanted it to be so long. I just kind of eyeballed it. And I think I put I put these tips on the three inch line and cut. And I just did that, took a guess that that would be a good enough size and I was happy with it. See, it's gonna fit in just like that. So before I do anything else, I'm just doing direct to paper with the memento, just to rough it up and that catches these edges some. I like it. Now I did not do it on this one because I kind of wanted the front piece to stand out some. All right. Now here's where I'm gonna want, like I said, I put four layers of embossing of mini. I used my black minis on this and that was, that took forever. 
this stuff that I have big rolls of is going to be a lot quicker. Now I'm still waiting um, for my, I ordered some of the new Stampin' Up! stuff that's supposed to be like sheets of adhesive. So we'll see how that goes once I get it. I've got too much stuff in the way. So I'm doubling. I'm going to put another layer and then I'll hold this up and see. Like, is this tall enough? Nope, I want it to be sit up even further. So let's go one more layer. Maybe two, we'll see. Stuff is sticky. See, Gail, you're right. I did have to be careful with my new pad. All right. Now, again, I think I'm going to want another layer. I like how that's sitting up. I already don't like that I can see the white on the sides, but that's going to be okay. Mm, I'm going to put one more layer. I really want this to be tall. Tell I'm really using this stuff. I mean, like using a lot of it. But I can tell you this is already going quicker than my first one. Just dealing with those teeny little ones. Ugh. All right, now this I'm just gonna put in here. I want the bottom to touch the, let me hold it up this way. The bottom to touch. All right, and then this is going to go here. Now this one I am going to use some of the little, the minis. Actually, let's use some of these corner bits and then it won't take so long peeling everything off. I don't have a ton of patience always. All right, let's cut this off here and here. This will go right on top also, touching the bottom to like the bottom of our box. All right, now I gotta use my liquid glue since I, the tape ran out. I do like that tape. Um, I just don't keep that refill handy and now I realize I need to. All right. And then I did have this popped up as well. So you can make your own little scene, whatever you want. I just wanted to use these bats because they're easy to, to die cut. And then when I looked at the, the labels and I thought they look like tombstones, like that would be perfect. But depending on what papers you have, like you do you. Okay. Now I want to add <coughs> mm, excuse me, all my glittery bats. Now my glitter paper is still the old stuff that's really thick, but it cut right through this just fine. So you can see I put, let me see, one, two, yeah, I put four layers there because I want this guy to kind of like be, I need more, look at that, three, because that white stuff was so much thicker. I did not realize. All right, let me put another one and I'm cutting it like the same because I want this one to kind of be up and over. I need one more. And you'll play with, you know, if you want to make your different pieces taller or you could have everything flat, like whatever you want. All 
right, now it's falling into where the yeah, dimensionals are in the way. That's good, good enough. All right, then I had this guy and I stacked three on him. See, this is what I had to do on the back of the other one was stack all these individual ones and I covered it. So that took a bunch of time. like right down here and then these other ones I just kind of put in there and I had one actually on I need to get a glue dot use this kind of glue dot So I stuck one right on the corner of my tombstone. <clears throat> mm, sorry. And then one more bat here. I am liking it. I really don't like that I can see the white on the side here. I may have to go back and like put a Sharpie on that. But it's almost done. Now let's add some of these iridescent pearls which I love these for Halloween. Spooky, spooky. They just remind me of like bug eyes. I mean, they would look good for other stuff too. And I'm just gonna put them in the same spots that I had before so I don't have to like try to think up something new. I like that. Okay, now we're almost finished. So I wanted to use this magic mesh ribbon because it's totally cool. Um, and I thought, at first I thought, well, let me maybe tie it around this way. But I didn't want to cover any of this stuff. So then I decided the angle. So that's what I'm gonna do. Only this time I'm gonna do the bow up in this corner. So let's see, pull out plenty. You could have colored it. I could have. Oh yeah, you mean the foam tape, right? Wait, this, I always, it always takes me a minute to figure out. It's over on this corner, just like when you're wrapping presents this way. I always have to think about it. Over on the corner. All right, and then that'll probably be enough. I mean, you get 10 yards of this. That's, I've made a lot of stuff. Oh, I can finally see the end of it. I've used this a lot, so I'm not surprised that I'm down to the end. And that's okay, because we buy ribbon to use it, right? All right, now I like to, when I'm doing my bows, I like to tie a knot first. This is kind of tricky. Kind of reminds me of like pantyhose or something, like the material. All right, so I'm gonna pull that tight and tie a knot first, and then I will do my bow. All right, make sure everything's going the right way. Oh, I'm liking this already. All right, <clears throat> I tie my bows upside down just because I feel like they, um, they lay nicer, they drape the way I want them to. And it's probably because I of the way I tie my bows. But either way, this is what works for me. All right, and then I'm gonna just zhuzh these up some. Flip it the right way. I feel like I want it a little smaller. Nice, and then I'm going to, then I'll just cut the ends. Come here. Just eyeballing. Okay. And then these can hang down a little. And then we've got our second one. So these are the two that I made. I mean, this was the first one I made. And this one was today. So 
just go back and watch for those measurements. This one was 12 by 12 paper and the side pieces, all the scoring was three quarters of an inch. Okay, and then don't forget um, if you share this by Saturday at nine o'clock, I'm gonna draw two people, two winners. Um, this is from Clean in My Craft Room. And they're just blank, they've got grid paper in them. I just stamped on the covers. So I will mail those out and uh, next week, oh yeah, so this week code ends, uh, that is next Wednesday. So next week will be October time, so October workshop time. So then we'll have something different, we'll have a different freebie. Um, but I would love to see you also like give this a try and then post something over in my stamping and sharing group. Let us see your creations. So that is it for today. Thanks for joining me. I hope you liked it. Um, and I really hope you're going to try it. So thanks. I'll see you next week. Bye.